Hey guys, it's off by one here, and today we're going to be solving number of one bits. In this problem, we're given an unsigned integer, and they want us to return the number of one bits that it has. So for example, for this number here, we know we have one, two, and three one bits. So I know what you're thinking. Why can't we just iterate through n, and then let's say we're at index i. Why can't we just check if that's equal to one, and then just increase our counter? Well, you can do that, and that would be an acceptable solution for leak code. But I'm pretty sure if you get asked this in an interview, they want you to use some kind of logical operation like AND or 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 something like that. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So here I've written another example and now our N is going to be 11. And the way you translate that to bits is 1, 0, 1, 1. So how can we count how many ones there are here using just our logical operations? Well, we know that if we AND something and if we AND two ones, we're going to get a true back. So let's just AND this value here with a 1 and see what happens. So if we AND it with a 1, our result is going to be 0, 0, 0, and 1. And how do we use this now? Well, we can have a counter, and let's say this variable is called temp. We can say that if temp equals 1, then we want to increase our counter by 1. OK, but how does that help us actually count the rest of the ones? Well, now that we already counted this one here, we can just cross it out. And the way to ignore it in this scenario would be to just shift everything to the right one. So that way, this gets deleted, and we're just left with 1, 0, 1. And then again, we can do our AND operation here. That was terrible. But either way, you can just do the AND again, and you see that this would be a 1. And we only care about this first digit because we're taking it one by one. And then the same thing again. We will shift to the right by one. And then we're left with 10, and it with 1, and that would give us 0, 0. So as you can see right now, we have 1, 2, and if we do it one last time by shifting it to the right again, we would have 1 and it with 1, and this would give us a 1. So at the end, we would have three 1s, and as you can see, that is how many there are here. So again, to recap, our algorithm is going to be, while n is not 0, what do we want to do? Well, we know we want to end this number with 1. So we could say n ended with 1. And like I said here, our variable is going to be called temp. So I'm going to just say t for now. And then we check if t is 1, then that means that our and worked and there is a 1 at this last position here. So what we want to do at that point, just increase our counter. And then at the end of all this, we want to modify n. And what do we want to do with n? Well, we want to shift it to the right because that way it gets rid of the most right digit. And eventually, if we do that enough times, you see that we're left with nothing but zeros. So that's how it would work. So n shifted to the right by 1. And then at the end, we just return our counter. And this is a valid solution that would work, but there is a slightly more efficient solution that I'm going to show you now. So this algorithm here does run in O of 1 time, which is the best we can do. But this new algorithm gets rid of unnecessary checks. Because for this one, we have to look through every single bit in the number. So let's say there were a lot of zeros. You know, this is a lot of unnecessary checking that we have to do just to find out that there's one, one at the end. Instead, there's a more clever solution. So instead of ending n by one, we can end n by n minus one. And you'll see why this works in a second. But as far as how you would come up with this in an interview, I honestly have no idea. I tried to get to it from this, but I can't think of anything. So here's how it works. So let's say our n is the same as we have above here. And if we ended by n minus 1, well, this minus 1 would just be this number here, because this is 11 and this is 10. And if you add these two together, you'll see that you'll have 1, 0, 1, 0. So what this algorithm here does is it gets rid of the last bit that is 1. So it would never get rid of zeros because it can't do that with the end. So it would only get rid of the least significant bit, and that's never going to be a zero. So if we're only ever canceling out the least significant bit that aren't zeros, then that means we're only going to iterate three times. So our pseudocode could be while n is not zero, then what we can do is set n equal to n ended by n minus one. And then while we're on this while loop, we want to increase our counter by one every time this runs. And then at the end, we can just return counter just like we did here. So let me just finish this example here. 
So this would be our new n because this was our original n and this was n minus 1. So now our n is this. And if you consider this while loop, let's say we have a count of 1 right now, then we would do 1, 0, 1, 0, ended by n minus 1. So this is currently 10, so this digit has to be a 9. So 1, 0, 0, 1. And that would equal 9. And if we add these two together, we can see that this bit can cancel out now, and we're only left with a 1 at the end. So this is our new n, and now our count is going to be 2 because we completed this iteration. And now we check it again. So 1, 0, 0, 0, that is 8. And if we end it by 7, then we would have 0, 1, 1, 1. And you can see that at the end here, we have all zeros. So before we exit the while loop, we're going to increase our count by 1. So now we would have a count of 3. And then we would just return the count, which would be 3. And that's correct. So let me just show you how to do that in the code. So I don't think I mentioned this in the actual tutorial, but our space is going to be constant for both implementations. So it doesn't matter which one you do, the space is still constant because we don't have any data structures here. So to start, we're going to initialize our counter and I'm just going to initialize it to zero because the count start to zero. And then you want to do this while loop. So while n is not equal to zero, what you want to do is set n to be equal to n ended by n minus one. And then we just increase our counter by one. And that's the whole code. At the end, you just return count, and then that should work. So as you can see, this code is pretty efficient, and now I'll go through the code manually. So to start, I've initialized the counter to zero, so we're good there. And now we just want to run this while loop while n is not equal to zero. So to start, our n is going to be 13, which translates to 1, 1, 0, 1 in binary. And we want to end it with n minus 1. So that would be a 12. And we'll just rewrite it here. So 1, 1, 0, 1 ended by 12. So that would be 1, 1, 0, 0. And that's going to result in 0, 0, 1, 1. And now this is going to be our new n. So n is now equal to 1, 1, 0, 0, which is 12. So now that we did that, we can increase our counter by 1. So counter is now 1. And now we go to the next iteration because n is still not equal to 0. So we would have 1, 1, 0, 0 ended with n minus 1, so 12 minus 1 is 11, so we would have 11, which is 1, 0, 1, 1. And if we add these two, we see that we get 0, 0, 0, 1. So now we can increase our count again, so our count is going to be 2. And then we can do our last iteration, so n is now going to be equal to this, so 1, 0, 0, 0 ended with n minus 1, that would be, this is an 8, so we're going to end with a 7, which is 0, 1, 1, 1. And if we end this, we get all zeros. So before we exit the while loop, though, we have to increase our count. So our count is now 3. And then for our next iteration, we see that n is equal to 0, so we can just return count. And as you can see, our count is 3, and that is correct. If this video helped you in any way, please leave a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.